Well, how about it, y'all? This is Daniel Nicholson with Nicholson Farms, and welcome back to another video. As you can see behind me, the goats are back here at the Holden Farm. Me and Maddie actually moved them yesterday afternoon. She acted like she didn't want to be on camera, so I didn't break out the camera and record all that. Uh, but we're going to talk about how everybody's doing today. Look at some pregnant bellies. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some genetics that we have in our herd, uh, where we're seeing some problems, where our problems are coming from. We've kind of got them pinpointed down to just a few, but we're going to talk to the, about that here in just a second. First, I'm gonna grab some feed for the bucks. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and feed them there in this little pen over here. Go ahead and feed the rabbits and then we'll get in there with goats, talk about them. And later on, we'll go check out the pigs in the greenhouse and see how everything's coming along. First, we're gonna grab a little bit of feed for the bucks, giving them about two pounds. This measuring scoop I got from Track Supply kind of tells you a basic weight. Get that, grab a rabbit bucket. These girls are going to be very jealous of these fellas getting some grain, aren't you? We're just feeding these bucks some grain right now because they are in this little pen. It's not really much in here for them. I've been tossing them a little bit of hay every day. Just don't really have anywhere else to put them right now. Trying to let some grass grow. You got the two steers and two horses and all these hungry goats. So they're gonna hold out in here. Might keep them in here for the majority of the summer, to be honest. Like I said, I don't really have a good other place to keep the bucks. Can't keep them in rotation. I don't like keeping them one gate away from the ladies. Uh, so this is kind of a safe zone right now. They're one gate in between them, but for the most part, I like to keep several gates in between them and it's just hard to rotate those billies with everybody else. Go ahead and fill up these rabbits. Feed real quick. Their water is good. You wanna see the babies? They're probably gonna hide from me. I'm gonna flip the camera. Babies are out of the little hutch or the little box. Where y'all at? Come out and stay good. See three of them. Should be four of them in there. That's four. I'm in here with all the does now, kind of tucked behind the barn. The wind is howling this afternoon. Uh, it kind of picks up and slows down, but it's just that time of year for us. We're going to have wind. Don't have all the fancy uh, cameras or microphones or anything like that, so it might be a little bit of wind in the background. Uh, but I mentioned that I wanted to talk to you about our goats and something that I have noticed over in the past couple months uh, about some, some of the genetics of some of our does. Uh, that is causing us problems. There's something they call the 20-80 rule or 80-20 rule. 20% 20 of your does are gonna cause 80% of your problems. And that is something we have definitely noticed here and throughout our winter. We had a really mild winter where it didn't get really cold, but it was also really rainy. So we de dealt with some parasite issues. Uh, wasn't able to get prohibit. Uh, one of the main wormers that we use. Uh, so we had to, to face some troubles with some worms. And we did lose a few uh, steer goats. I didn't really share too much on the camera. I really didn't have a video where it came in uh, that I wanted to mention it. Uh, but I want to be honest with you. We're not perfect with what we're doing. Uh, we're just trying to figure out what works for us and continue breeding the goats that uh, work under our management. Uh, I want to manage goats as least as possible for its dewormers, hooves, all that good stuff. I've talked about that several times on the channel. Uh, but like I said, we're not perfect and we did lose uh, three steer goats. But out of those three steer goats that we lost, three does have caused us a lot of issues. And we're going to explain that all in a second. I'm going to flip the camera around and kind of I'll point out the does and then I'll show you uh, the kids that they have beside them now. Uh, if you remember a couple videos back, I talked about how we had some in the sick, sick pen. And I brought some dolings home uh, to put in the sick pen. Uh, we're going to show you three does that pretty much every kid, actually it's four does, pretty, but pretty much every kid that we had a problem with or we lost this year came out of those three, four does. So let me flip the camera around. I'll show you one right here. There's nothing we're going to do about her. She is the pet. That is sheep goat. I take back the three to four does. It's actually five does that I'm going to talk about uh, that we had problems out of. But this is sheep goat. Both of her kids are still alive. Uh, she has never been the healthiest goat. She came from a sale barn probably about four, 
maybe four or five years ago. Uh, we call her sheep because she gets all this wool. I'm pretty sure that has a lot to do with holding parasite loads, uh, not shedding her coat as well. Uh, but she's always been a pretty fluffy, pretty fluffy goat. Uh, but like I said, we have both of her kids uh, still with us. Um, but both of them ended up in the sick pen at one point. This is her little doling right here. Uh, she's one of the two that I brought home about a week and a half ago and uh, dewormed and started fed, fed her a little bit of grain. Uh, and I don't see her little steer kid. So this guy right here is her little steer. Uh, he was one of the original sick goat group uh, that never got taken up to the lease uh, this past time. Kept him at home, fed him a little bit. He is pretty much fully recovered. Still got a little mess on his tail, but it's been over a month since he's had diarrhea. He's just got a dingleberry, I guess. But he's filled back out real nice. Uh, happy with the way he turned around, but that shows you right there. Sheep is not a good one to keep offspring off of, and we never have because of that reason, just how much trouble we've had keeping her alive. We do go the little extra mile keeping sheep healthy, healthy over all the rest of them. So let me pick out another one and we'll talk about her. This is her right here. Uh, this brown butthead doe, she is a fairly old goat now. Uh, she's one of the ones that I held on to whenever I sold all my goats uh, going at, into college. She's like one of the three that I held on to. So she's been around for a long time. She's never really raised a great kid. Uh, let's see, I think Last year, her kid had boarded, and then a couple years before that, I think she had males, and we sold them all. Uh, but this is one of hers right here, this spotted up kid, or steer goat, and he is actually one of the ones that we were considering growing out, but I didn't like how he's getting starting to get wormy, wouldn't gain any weight. Uh, so we went ahead and steered him, and actually I was holding on to his brother as well. His brother is no longer, no longer with us, uh, he passed away, just got two down, couldn't turn them around. Uh, but both of her kids turned out bad as well. This doe right here with the half white face is the next one. And this is her little doling from last year. Uh, she's one that we brought home from the lease a couple weeks ago or a week and a half ago to feed a little bit and to deworm as well. And it really confuses me on her she's always done great with kids her kids have always grown out uh, but she had twins she had one little buckling and a doling the little buckling did not make it it was kind of that same time period when the other one passed away all three of them kind of in the same same time period just got wet and nasty and i didn't deworm them in time but kind of confused me on her because she has some really really good daughters in the herd as well uh this blackhead doe right here is hers the blackheaded doe right there is hers this is a granddaughter of her uh, they've always done really really well and she where she goes she is majority kiko so it kind of stunned me a little bit i don't know if it's just bad luck or not but we're gonna keep her uh, give her some more chances and this little doe right here i think i'm gonna get rid of her i'm not even gonna give her a chance had to give her special treatment so she needs to hit the road this older doe that we we're talking about just a second ago she's bred i'm probably gonna let her kid out this year and then uh, get rid of her once we wean the kids off next year and then that leaves this doe over here So this doe right here, this is her little doling. And she is pretty small, but she got bred. And I don't know if you can see the mess on her tail, but she aborted about a week and a half ago. She's really small. I was hoping she didn't get bred anyway, so there's no harm in that. But also this doe right here had a little buckling that also passed away. Uh, so questions on her, she actually got pretty down uh, whenever she was raising the kids. She lost a lot of weight. She got a little wormy on me. I, I wormed her. She's turned around. She's filled out great. That little dolin looks great as well. But this doe has some split teats. And I, if I remember correctly, I had to go back and look at our records whenever we weaned. But I think that doling has a split teat as well. Uh, so I think I'm just going to see if that doling has a split teat or not. If she doesn't, I'm going to keep her. 
If not, she's gonna go on down the road. That's two strikes on her. We're gonna give this doe another shot. She is full blooded to another doe in here that she raised the best kids every year. So kind of want to hold on to her just a little bit longer. So this is the next doe we have that uh, we got a little bit of a problem with. She has been the doe that I've been talking about. That one goat that I need to call, but I'm not taking one goat to the cell. This is her. She's starting to fill out a little bit better now, uh, but she's gonna be going to the cell for sure. She's not a good looking goat to me at all. And she is aggravating. She's always by herself. She never herds with other goats. She's always in your pocket. I don't know, she just aggravates me for some reason. She's gonna be hitting the road. And this is her kid from this year, this boar looking kid. He looks healthy now, but he was one of the ones that we held back from taking to the lease. All three of these were, uh, but he's gonna be one of those that's always sick, just like his mama. So out of our about 30 does or so, uh, those five does have been causing us problems this year. Uh, so it's something to definitely look at. If you have one that's continuing to cause you problems or giving you sick kids every year, uh, just go ahead and get rid of her. We're actually gonna be selling goats here in about two weeks, hopefully. I, the sale was the day I need to look at the market report. If it's up next week, I think I might go ahead and pull the trigger and uh, sell some some kids. We got all our steer goats. Uh, we've got one coal nanny for sure. A couple dolings that I'm gonna go ahead and take to the sale as well. It's probably gonna be, be about 12 or 14 of them. Haven't really made that final decision. All the steer goats are going except for one. I have somebody that wants me to grow one out for them to butcher, uh, but I'm ready to get the herd size reduced a good bit. Uh, going into spring, I really wanna be able to use the goats to manage the pastures, to hopefully develop healthier pastures. And I think less goats is gonna help us do that a whole lot better. So right now we're kind of at that point where we don't really have anywhere to expand with the goats. Uh, so it's time to kind of look at some of them and decide whether or not they deserve to be here or not. We're going to keep the best, sell the rest, and uh, hopefully this will help us continue to just build a healthy herd. So whenever we do find the property to run more goats, uh, we'll have a healthy herd to start with. Uh, but I guess I get to the rest of the chores. We'll run up and check on the pigs real quick and see how they're doing. So I didn't really film the pigs. It doesn't really show up on camera that well, but you're a good bit higher elevation over there. And that wind's coming straight across the top of that hill. Uh, so I don't know if you could hear me talk over there or not, uh, but pigs are doing good. They got plenty of feed. I went ahead and watered them. Our other two gilts are on the other side of this barn taking a nap. Uh, watering the steers now. They're doing pretty good. Y'all haven't seen them in a while. This guy right here is come a chunk. This one right here is probably about the same size uh, when we got him about a month ago. He's probably a little bit bigger, but this guy right here is putting it on. So back down here at the greenhouse now, I'm gonna wrap up my day here. Uh, but we still have our early spring vegetable crops uh, that we're trying to sell. Sold a couple this past Saturday. I uh, need to be selling a whole lot more. I do not want to plant all that stuff. Uh, but I think people are just not ready to plant gardens yet. It's February. They're not thinking about it, I guess. Uh, but inside the greenhouse, we definitely have some activity in here. I finally got done planting everything in here. There's 36 trays of stuff. And we've got all kind of stuff coming up right now. Tomatoes are coming up. All tomatoes on this side. Uh, these things were just planted about two or three days ago. Don't have this one labeled. I ran out of tags, but this one's zucchini. This is spaghetti squash. Uh, planted some more better boys, some more squash, some more cucumbers. These are the only things I do not have planted yet. This is our peppers. I like to soak my seeds for the peppers for a couple days and actually to the point I soak them in paper towels, but I like to soak them to the point that they're actually starting to sprout a little bit and then throw them in the ground. The hardest thing I've ever had to uh, germinate is peppers. Uh, but we also have some marigolds coming up. Uh, saw a little action in the zucchini here. All our cucumbers are pretty much have popped up and the rest of our squash is popping up. 
So at night we're cutting on a two burner heater. This is just a space heater that we run in here. At night I've got it hung up so I can kind of move it out the way whenever I am watering. It's not sitting on the ground, anything dripping on it. Uh, but we just use that to heat at night. I uh, cut it on before I leave in the afternoons and my dad comes out here and cuts it off uh, before he goes to work in the mornings. Other than that, it's just heated by the, the heat. I mean, that, that heater's off now. It's pretty cloudy outside and we're still sitting at about 78 to 80 degrees in here. Perfect temperature for germinating all these plants. You need about 70 degrees. Uh, this should get them up and going and uh, hopefully they're gonna be a healthy crop for us. It has been a little bit harder than I expected to sell the spring stuff. Last year, I didn't sell any spring stuff. I got too much of a late start, uh, but it's been a little bit harder than I expected. Uh, hopefully it's gonna start picking up. I've got it on Marketplace, a couple farm and garden groups on Facebook, Craigslist, and uh, a Facebook page for our local town. Uh, so hopefully, People get the word and start buying some plants. Uh, it's also probably they're a little hesitant and they like to go to the nurseries or the box stores uh, to pick up plants as well. So uh, it's just part of developing a market plan and uh, clients and all that stuff I'm still trying to work on. Last year we had pretty good luck of selling the summer vegetable stuff. Uh, so hopefully that's gonna continue to trend. Uh, we do have a lot more this year than we did last year. Uh, so hopefully we can keep building up our clientele and uh, hopefully we can start soon so I can sell all this lettuce and, and broccoli and cauliflower stuff so I don't have to plant it or force myself to plant it because I don't want to throw it away. Uh, but everything's going good in the greenhouse. Sorry I didn't really show you much of the pigs are up front. Uh, the wind is picking up even more and more. So uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this video up. I got to do some water in here, get home and uh, do the other list of chores that the wife has for me. Uh, but I really appreciate you hanging out with us. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, leave us a comment, and we'll see you all in the next one.